Welcome back to 23 Minute Reads with me, Maya D. This is kind of like my virtual book club because in these five minute or so videos, I share with you my takeaways from my current reading. Right now, that is undergraduate research in dance. As a part of my 23 to 23 challenge, I'm reading 23 minutes per day, every day as an action of self-love, as an investment in myself, and as a way of providing myself with some consistency in an ever-changing world. Hoping that you will join me along in this journey by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and leaving some comments down there in that comment section so that it's an actual dialogue going on. Having in mind that while I have several decades of experience as an educator, as a performer, and a curriculum writer, I'm not the know-all be-all for this book. I'm simply providing a space for dialogue. Well, this week I read pages 110 through 146, and let me get my notes so I can give you my takeaways. Takeaway number one is abstracts. So one of the wonderful things included in this book are actual abstracts from undergraduate research projects. Not only do these serve as real life examples that kind of continue the discussion and your understanding of the concepts that were um, discussed earlier in that chapter, but I'm finding some really great papers, like some papers that I want to read and I'm finding books that I want to read, like this one. The Dance Claimed Me. It's a biography of Pearl Primus. So I wanted to ask, because this is a thicker book, I wanted to ask, um, I wanted to show it to you and ask, are you willing to read this book with me? Or have you already read this book so that we can have like real time, real life, uh, conversation and dialogue going on which also means that you want to turn on your alert so you know when the video is posting and so forth so that it's closer to real time so do you want to read this with me let me know in the comments takeaway number two is actually it's actually takeaway number two is negative perceptions the quote reads the research indicates that this lack of comfort on the part of the professionals is the source of the negative perceptions in the students, end quote. So this quote is taken from an actual abstract and questioned the lack of American, the presence, the lack of the presence of American dance styles in the Utah ballroom dance competitions. The study found that the lack was actually based on a lack of comfort in the instructors, in the forms, in teaching the forms, and was resulting in students having a decreased value of those forms. So I was immediately taken back to a book that we read earlier in, um, in our 21 minute reads and reminded of remarks from Dr. D Dr. Glendola Mills, I'm getting excited, remarks from Dr. Glendola Mills who talked about um, writers, or critics who do not understand, who fail to understand polyrhythmic music, not being able to see the technique in dance forms that are done to polyrhythmic music. So they wouldn't be able to write and uh, talk about it from a knowledgeable place because um, they didn't have that understanding of the music. When I read that, I began to question if that lack of knowledge of those writers, cr critics, and so forth had informed the lack of value that is sometimes placed on West African dance forms in the present, right? So as I'm reading this abstract by Emily Darby that highlights how the lack of knowledge can negatively affect the wealth of the knowledge that our students receive. I'm also, I'm thinking about Dr. Glendola Mills remarks, and I'm also thinking about how sometimes there is an imbalance value placed on American dance forms and American higher ed. So I'm thinking about jazz and I'm thinking about hip hop. How much value do we place on them in our American dance forms? And is it informed or related to the lack of uh, knowledgeable professors, instructors that are within the institution and able to teach it. So just things that I'm thinking about. Takeaway number three is actually language. In previous uh, videos, I've mentioned my desire to use language as a tool of 
access that works towards inclusivity. Also, in previous books that we've read, academic writing has come up as something that is that sometimes perpetuates exclusivity, the opposite of inclusivity. But I feel like this book lies in the gap and builds a bridge. Through the use of accessible language, it builds knowledge and vocabulary of upcoming scholars who are currently in their undergraduate process, helping them to craft scholarly writing that describes the impact of their creative work. Speaking of impact, I would love our group to grow to 500 people by the end of the year. So please make sure that you are liking, subscribing, and sharing. Thank you for staying to the end. Spread a good word, stay blessed, and I'll see you again soon.